Since purchasing our floating home, moving on board and sailing the east coast of Australia, we've been pushed out of our comfort zone. And today, I'm about to experience fear like never before. Caught in a storm, surrounded by reef, smashed by 80 kilometer an hour winds. Look, this guy's having issues too. 35 nautical miles offshore. Are we still driving? Holy sh What could possibly go wrong? Say hang on. Join us for this raw and real experience firsthand. It actually makes me feel a bit sick. So let's get you up to speed if you missed our last episode. We're just arriving to Lady Musgrave Island. It's one of the most beautiful on the Great Barrier Reef. Overnight, we sailed our boat a whopping 95 nautical miles to get here. We're pretty exhausted. We haven't had much sleep. And now we're about to enter this famous reef that completely encompasses the island like a lasso. There is just one entrance, which was man-made. So let's make our way in. Just to be clear, at this stage, storms aren't forecast. Through the early days of the week. Nine and a half metres. So the depth's nine and a half metres. I think we'll be putting all the chain out here, uh, which is about 45 metres. So the only thing we're worrying about are those bombies. Masses of coral that could punch a hole in our hull if we make one mistake. Now we're going to let the scenes play out in this episode. So you get the full picture, the full experience. Let me keep a look out now. I've got the polarised sunnies on. Wish us luck. John and I have been living on board for five months now. Yeah, we're good here. To us, this looks like any other ordinary day. All right. Yep. Only today, we're having major problems anchoring. Dragging, so having to lift up the anchor again and reset it. Bugger. Bit of time consuming. Every time it does this, it, you know, takes another five, ten minutes. Yeah, it's pretty painful. But better to be safe than sorry. And not only that, we can't have a dragging anchor, particularly here at Lady Musgrave. As I brought up the anchor, I realized a fitting had moved, which is probably why the anchor wasn't setting in the sand. We need it to be like super glue right now. So annoying. Not only because of all the coral around, but in a freak storm, it can leave victims stranded. We've seen it and you've seen it time and time again. See? We're sleep deprived, but this is a non-negotiable. I'll leave this here. Take two. Unfortunately, we've just tried again for a second time and it is just not holding. Picking it up, we're going somewhere shallower. Damn it. Such a waste of time. Energy. Fuel. And that's when I noticed the swivel had moved again. It was driving us crazy. Damn it. This like hardly ever happens. Hardly ever. And it definitely doesn't happen twice in a row where the shackle does that. Yeah. So we're on the move, dodging coral bombies, trying to find a shallower spot. It's a bit shallower here, Christina. Okay, well that's good. I'm gonna turn it around and we'll drop the anchor, okay? All right. You need to tap the anchor or is it right? Yeah, I do. Take three. Hopefully this is the last time. So you know how I said setting the anchor is a non-negotiable? Well, with no wind, it became a negotiable. Just get up, if that's what you're doing. We needed sleep. So we've literally just slept for a couple of hours. Both feeling tired and like I've got a headache. I, mean, I feel like I've got sunstroke or something. But holy moly, look at the weather. <gasps> John. Reflection, one G. There is ooh, there's sh everywhere. Oh my, oh my gosh, it's dusty. It smells like a running fish. Everything is so hot. Blue green algae is the most ancient of all photosynthetic organisms. This stuff is two billion years old and completely changed the Earth's atmosphere. It grows with nutrients, warm temperatures, and still waters. Wow, it really does stink. Uh, you don't want to swim. 
Emma, hey. It is so warm right now. So calm. So bright. And we're completely unaware of the chaos. Holy crap! That'll descend upon us. And our friends, we have company. So there are our friends, Chris and Maddie. They've made it, which is great. Can't wait to hang out with them. They have like this swing on the bow of their boat. Whoa! Whoa! It's gonna be so fun. I wonder if we could do that with one of our little spinnaker halyards or something. Okay, it's hot. Our plan for the day is to paddle to Chris's boat. We can paddle the whole way around the island. That'd be cool. Do we take a backpack with a... I don't know, do we need a water bottle or something? But as it turns out, that was way too ambitious. We've canned the idea. It is way too hot, there's not a breath of wind, and while retrieving the drone, oh, it nicks me. Yeah, without, oh god, hey. <laughs> Yes, just a tip. I was not expecting that. It's my first injury. It has been a huge day, so we're getting an early night, but at two o'clock in the morning, we're woken by the sound of howling winds and splashing swell. So here we are half asleep again, doing an inspection of Takana, tying down loose items and checking that anchor. We tried a creek four times and we couldn't get it to set. We're relying on our anchor alarm to tell us if our position moves in this bomby minefield. We're also putting away our cushions in case it rains. Because of the humidity here, we don't want them to go mouldy. Is it all right if I let this board down? I don't yeah. know if you want to take the fin off first. Your hands can knock out there. Oh, something like that. So the weather's getting a little, how you doing out? And we could be expecting a bit of a storm, so. A storm, it appears this guy could sense. Out you get. Out you get. Rather than killing. Out you get. An innocent victim in all of this. I just showed him the way back out the hatch. But this should have been our warning. That the storms were brewing. I think it's on me. It's on me. Get it off. Get it off, get it off, get it off, get it off. It's like a bird sized moth. <laughs> you should be okay. We're holding so far. Yeah, well, that's good. Is it high tide? Is that why there's a little bit more splashing? Because the waves are going over the top of the reef. As we fly our drone to its outer edge, you can see the reef is copping a beating from the coral sea. At low tide, it acts like a brick wall, a barrier, creating calmer waters for us sheltered on the inside. Well, good morning. Uh, the weather isn't fantastic today. There's some storms over the mainland and a heap of boats have decided to leave. Oh yeah, there's another one leaving actually. John's just gone over to see our friends, Chris and Maddie. We've got our little walkie talkies. So we wanted to say good morning to them and we thought we could also keep an eye on each other. Um, so we're gonna give them one of our walkie talkies. I think John- Morning, over, over. <laughs> morning guys. Hey, how are you over there? Do you sleep well? Like an absolute baby, you're so good. So good. We thought the walkie-talkies might be a good idea just in case, I don't know, in an emergency, we need each other or... It is so windy up there! Yeah. Or... You run out of eggs or something. Yeah, I love that. Such a good idea. <laughs> How's this weather today though? A bit average, eh? So average. And all these people leaving. We're just hoping that like some of these people get off the moorings, but I don't think they will. I think they're in for the for the long run now, hey. We thought the same, well, maybe we'll snag one, but we might move a little bit later today so we're not too close to the reef in case the wind picks up, but Hank said hello as well, by the way. <laughs> hey, Hank. As for us, well, the anchor looked pretty secure. We had winds last night, gusts again today, and our GPS said we hadn't moved. I should mention we have around 45 metres of chain on board and we have the whole lot out. We've even put out the road. We're a little nervous because we haven't used it before since buying Takana, but we need the extra scope right now. All right, well, over and out. I'll chat to you guys a bit later. Alligator. But by the afternoon, the weather started to deteriorate and we're stuck indoors. 
Out here, we're 35 nautical miles offshore. Ordinarily, there is no cell phone reception, but for us, the booster we fitted on top of our mast is working miracles, and we have one bar of reception. Damn it, it's cold. How are you guys in here? Yeah, just hanging just out? <laughs> nah, the Instagram antenna comes in handy, even though these guys aren't Instagramming, they're just <laughs> doing actual work. Meanwhile, John was out doing a MacGyver fiberglass repair around a damaged stanchion so that driving rain wouldn't get in. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Pretty good. What are you doing? Trying to do <laughs> That's... repairs in the rain. <laughs> and at the same time, lightning was setting in. This is silly. I'm going back inside. I don't want to get electrocuted. And with a thick cloud cover, not only are we losing phone reception, but sign of Chris's boat. It'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it's still there. I just re reset my anchor. And then oh, came yeah. Here. So I'm climbing up. I can't see it. It's very really weird because the boat's moving quite well, but it's so slow and smooth you that don't you don't really notice. Do just yeah. watching it do a little circle on here. Exactly. Whoa! And as the winds pick up dramatically, Chris is off to check on his boat, doned in John's rain jacket. It's coming down pretty good now. My, my... Yeah, it is really like bumping down, hey. Look how much it rained. Holy dooly. And this is when it really all began. No? What happened? It just felt like the boat moved, didn't it? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. It just felt like the boat just moved. Well, I'm glad he made it. Yeah. It's blowing 20 knots out there. That felt like the, we just dragged and then caught again. Really? Did that on? Did that fit, yeah. It's not showing that it moved, but that we definitely, that was weird. I feel like you're just being dramatic. See, Hango. Woo! getting blown back. Mate, my tender was like full. <laughs> but on Chris's return, <laughs> Sorry, man, our worst nightmare was realised. More than 30 knot gusts. What, what, what can I do, John? And we were dragging. Oh, that's good. The engine is now on, the helm covers off. Why are you going forward on it? Just take the weight off. Oh, okay. It. How far back did we go? Not that far, like 40 meters. So yeah, yes. Oh my, are you serious? And it's not over yet. Are we still dragging? We've never been in this situation before. As long as there's nothing behind, sweet. Oh my God, we did just drag like 20 meters. There's a bombing out to our right. It, it'll catch something, it'll catch a bombing or a rock. Room here, so. Oh God, we're not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> we are not going to sleep tonight. Yeah, no, I take it. You're in. I just ripped around. So we're good. You're in. Are you going forward on yeah, it now? Yeah, yeah. Point to which way the anchor is. At this point in my mind, oh my I'm thinking about all the possibilities, all the things that could go wrong. Writing off the boat, getting stuck on the reef, hitting a bommie, getting a hole in our hull. We don't know how long this system will belt us for, if it's going to get worse, if we'll be able to continue to power against the wind, which is what we're doing right now. Oh. And then there's the guilt we'd feel if something were to happen to Chris's boat in front of us. Holy sh! Oh my gosh! See, there's a bombing over there. There's a bombing over in front over there too. Holy crap! It is so windy up there. 
is actually 40 knots. Do you want to go to the front again? wind wasn't coming from just one direction. We were getting whipped around like a snake's tail. It's all the way back. It's like back that way. It looks like it. As you can see, the anchor is to the port side as the rain pelts down, stinging my skin. Oh my God. And in seconds, the anchor is now to the starboard. And when I turn around, check out the tender. Oh. Holy shit, look at the tender. Oh my God. This is crazy. <laughs> no, it's not. This is insane. Right, what are we gonna do tonight? It's oh. supposed to get worse tonight. No. Yeah, yeah. No, oh my god, I feel sick. No. Look, this guy's having issues too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very close to the reef. It's now 3.30 in the afternoon. The sun will set in two hours. Oh my god, he's so sick. We don't know how long this system's going to last. So we're continuing to attempt to load a weather map. Did you say it's not loading? And then somehow Maddie got enough reception. It's huge. That's um, did you want to have a quick look? Maddie was able to get on her phone. So it's passing over us. Okay. It looks like the worst of it is passing over us now. Yeah. The worst of it, it looks like it's passing over us now. Okay. Oh, we're gonna go, are we? Yeah. We're kind of bad. Worse than us now. That wind turning now. And as the wind turned, the anchor ripped out again. I think we're going backwards. Can you keep an eye on that link? Yep, yep. We are right over the bombing. Yeah, can you get the thing? Our saving grace was that the bombing was deep. We're right over it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I can't do anything about it. A lot of the bombies are marked, but they're deep under the surface. And we got lucky. We're still in line with our mate, so unless he's dragging back. Yeah. Are we out? Yeah. The anchors ripped out again. We're out? Yep. So just, just give me a sec, we're probably going to up. And we're dragging. 71 meters. Good. And that wind's straight. That wind's coming straight from the, from the west. This actually makes me feel a bit sick. Look how close we got to the bombing. Oof. Over the next couple of hours, the wind slowly eased. We caught our breaths, we debriefed together and tried to come up with a solution for the anchor. We ended up bringing out the angle grinder. Have you got a picture of the anchor? We're also going to pack up the tender because during the storm, we not only had ours, but Chris's tied up to the stern. The extra weight would have also contributed to us dragging. You know, you'd like this. Oh! what you want to be doing with lightning around. No. You're standing in a metal boat and in deep water. Right, well let's be quick. Yeah, I'm trying. With the tender on the bow. You are right. We were thinking ahead, preparing for a round two. But I think I should get that wet weather gear out. Yeah, I I'm think so too. Sleep in it. Like if you drag, you don't have time to put on wet weather gear. No. That was really gnarly. We're also wondering what we should do with the anchor. It seems it's set now, so do we just let it go and wait for the next storm to hit? 5.4 metres under us. So we should only be in 7.5 metres with 50 metres out. I'm wondering whether I should actually just dive in the water now. Really? Yeah, take the hammer down and just check the knuckle. To be fair, it's been raining. There'd be no visibility. Yeah. The other option is to re-anchor and then reverse on it. It was a risk we were willing to take. So we have decided to test the anchor. 
uh, the anchor wasn't holding. So we are now just um, lifting the anchor. We're going to try and grind some of it back because we noticed that the shackle was doing this. Chris is coming over to help us. The sun's going down. It's all happening. I honestly can't believe our luck here, but the windlass started to slow down. Its battery was slowly dying. Let me get John to explain what's happened. The way I wired the solar panels up is that they charge the domestic house batteries, not the engine start batteries. And the windlass, weirdly, I have a feeling, runs off the engine start battery. And because we raised the anchor four times on the windlass, it's drained the engine battery and we haven't been charging it as we've sat here with the solar. And so we have enough juice in the battery for just one final anchor retrieval. So we need it to set on the very first go before the sun has officially set. Yeah. We'll yep. This was the moment of truth as we reversed on it. Right, it's getting tight. Holding our breath. It's tight. We couldn't believe our luck. We literally haven't slept for two days. Oh, it was a good moment. It's been a big hell. day. Ah, my phone. That was good. I went real hard against that and it, and it helped. Yeah, you went really hard. I'm so if glad you did. If we drag again, I'm going to be so surprised. Yeah. It feels so good and we think Chris is a good omen. I actually feel like like a little bit sick. You know when you have like anxiety and then joy and you just feel like you need a scoop? Oh, I'm always going to remember this moment, that's for sure. I feel really bad because Chris had, was all soaking wet. We're both freezing and they just got back to their boat and they were, I'm pretty sure Chris is nice and dry and they were just enjoying a nice hot cup of soup and we called him back over to help us again. So thank you, mate. What a guy. All right. I want to have a shower. <laughs> Can I just say? I know you don't like public affection, but I think this deserves a hug and a kiss. <laughs> God, we were going to die! Honestly, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> and you know what the worst part is? I have to edit this. So I have to watch it back like a hundred times. By the way, next week it's John's birthday. So join us for an incredible birthday celebration. Oh, yeah. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the party and a huge thank you to our Patreons. Join our crew, find out where we're off to next and what our future plans are. 13.06 on the domestic ones, so that's pretty good. That's good. We've had the engine running for an hour and a half.